Oh, hey there. It's great to see you again. Come on in. Let's have some fun. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's do some quick housekeeping before getting into today's story. I'm working on Arctic Wolves by Diamond Art Club and Robin Coney. And the schedule for the week. Um, on Mondays, we're going to do Mystery Mondays and we're going to do some history or mythology stories, some more popular, some little well known. On Wednesdays, we'll do Whippin' Chats for Whip It Wednesday. Friday is going to be Friday Frenzy, so it'll be some unboxings and really just whatever I feel like putting out there, kind of random stuff. Um, I am using blue tack in my pen. Um, it's what I've found that works the most, so that question is answered. And... Without further ado, let's get into today's Mystery Monday story. Who remembers the Buffy episode where everybody is dancing themselves to death? It's the musical episode and they're singing about all their feelings and then they're dancing and they're spontaneously combusting. Well, guess what, guys? Something like that actually happened. Nobody knows why. But let's get in to the story of the Dancing Plague of 1518. All right, guys. The Dancing Plague of 1518. In July of 1518, a woman whose name was Frau Trophea stepped into the street of Strasbourg, Alsace, France, and began dancing. She seemed unable to stop, and she kept dancing until she collapsed from exhaustion. After resting, she resumed the compulsive, frenzied activity. She continued this way for days, and with, within a week, more than 30 other people, people were similarly afflicted. They kept going long past the point of injury. So let's stop just for a second right there, guys. I did ballet and tap when I was younger. And I can remember some of the blisters that you would get. And the uh, determination it takes to dance when you have blisters, when your feet are hurting. I can't imagine dancing for days. Like, when I'm hurt, I'm hurt. I don't want to be out there dancing. Definitely not when I've got sores on my feet. And you know they didn't have the best shoes for dancing in 1518. Can you just imagine? So what did they do? City officials were alarmed by the ever-increasing number of dancers. And civic and religious leaders theorized that more dancing would be the solution. So they arranged for uh, guild halls to be put together for the dancers to gather in and musicians to come and accompany the dancing and professional dancers to help those who were afflicted to continue dancing, which only helped spread the contagion until as many as 400 people were consumed by by the dancing compulsion and 150 of them died and in early September it just disappeared the 1518 event was the most thoroughly documented and probably the last of several such outbreaks in Europe but it was not the first 
Events of the Dancing Plague took place between the 10th and 16th centuries. Um, the second best known of these took place in 1374, and that was spread through several towns along the Rhine River in Germany. The outbreaks of dancing mania varied. Several characteristics of it have been recorded, generally occurring in times of hardship. Up to tens of thousands of people would appear to dance for hours, days, weeks, and even months. Like, let's go back to the 1518. It started in July, and they danced until September. Can you imagine? Just... And their solution was, well, you know, they're dancing, so more dancing. That's... They're dancing till they pass out, and then they're getting up and continuing to dance. But the solution is going to be more dancing. That's they, they just have to dance it out. So let's, you know, put them in buildings where they can dance and let's get the music and people to help them keep dancing until they no longer have an urge to dance. Y'all, my urge to dance would be done after a couple of hours, not months. Like, I can't, y'all. Women have often been portrayed in modern literature as the usual participants in dancing mania, although contemporary sources suggest otherwise. Whether the dancing was spontaneous or an organized events, event is also debated. What is certain, however, is that dancers seemed to be in a state of unconsciousness and unable to control themselves. Well, yeah, I would think so. To dance for days, weeks, or months on end? Uh, yeah, you'd have to be unable to control yourself. In his research into the social phenomena, author Robert Bartholomew, who's an American sociologist, notes that contemporary sources record that participants often did not reside where the dancing took place. Such people would travel from place to place and others would join them along the way. With them, they brought customs and behavior that were strange to the local people. Bartholomew describes how dancers wore strange colorful attire and held wooden sticks. It's important to note also, that the 1374 case, it's also around the time that the fairy tale of the Pied Piper came about. So it's believed that the dancing phenomenon led to that cautionary tale. Robert Ma Marx, in his study of hypnotism, notes that some decorated their hair with garlands. However, not all outbreaks involved foreigners, and not all were particularly calm. Bartholomew notes that some paraded around naked and made obscene gestures. Some had sexual intercourse. Others acted like animals and jumped, hopped, and leaped about. They hardly stopped, and some danced until they broke their ribs and subsequently died. Throughout, dancers screamed, laughed, or cried, and some sang. Bartholomew also notes that observers of dancing mania were sometimes treated violently if they refused to join in. Participants demonstrated odd reactions to the color red. In a history of madness in 16th century Germany, Middlefort notes that they could not perceive the color red at all. And Bartholomew reports it was said that dancers could not stand the color red, often become, becoming violent on seeing it. Okay, so we've got people that are dancing until they die and having strange reactions to the color red. 
and no solutions yet because obviously you know giving them places to dance didn't help Bartholomew also notes that dancers could not stand pointed shoes and that dancers enjoyed their feet being hit Throughout, those affected by dancing mania suffered from a variety of ailments, including chest pains, convulsions, hallucinations, hyperventilation, epileptic fits, and visions. Um, yeah. Well, I imagine they're starving and dehydrated and severely injured. Y'all, I don't know. Middle Fort, however, describes how some ended up in a state of ecstasy. Typically, the mania was contagious, but it often struck small groups, such as families and individuals. In Italy, a similar phenomenon occurred, referred to as Tarantism, in which the victims were said to have been poisoned by a tarantula or a scorpion. Its earliest known outbreak was in the 13th century, and the only antidote known was to dance to particular music to separate the venom from the blood. It occurred only in the summer months. As with dancing mania, people would suddenly begin to dance, sometimes affected by a perceived bite or sting, and were joined by others who believed the venom from their own old bites was reactivated by the heat or the music. Dancers would perform a tarantella, accompanied by music which would eventually cure the victim, at least temporarily. Y'all, thank God for modern medicine, because um, dancing to cure the dancing plague, just not where my mind goes with that. But, you know, what do I know? Some participated in further activities, such as tying themselves up with vines and whipping each other, pretending to sword fight, drinking large amounts of wine, and jumping into the sea. Some died if there was no music to accompany their dancing. Sufferers typically had symptoms resembling those of dancing mania, such as headaches, trembling, twitching, and visions. Y'all, I just, I cannot imagine this. I don't get it. As with dancing mania, participants apparently did not like the color black, and women were reported to be most affected. Unlike dancing mania, Tarantism was confined to Italy and southern Europe. It was common until the 17th century, but ended suddenly with only very small outbreaks in Italy as late as 1959. Y'all... That wasn't that long ago. It's 2021, so... Yeah, that was not that long ago. A study of the phenomenon in 1959 by religious history professor Ernesto DiMartino revealed that most cases of Tarantism were probably unrelated to spider bites. Many participants admitted that they had not been bitten, but believed they were infected by someone who had been, or that they had simply touched a spider. The result was mass panic, with a cure that allowed people to behave in ways that were normally prohibited at the time. 
Despite their differences, Tarantism and Dancing Mania are often considered synonymous. Well, yeah. As the real cause of Dancing Mania was unknown, many of the treatments for it were simply hopeful guesses, although some did seem effective. Like what? The 1374 outbreak occurred only decades after the Black Death and was treated in a similar fashion. Dancers were isolated and some were exorcised. People believed that the dancing was a curse brought about by St. Vitus, so they responded by praying and making pilgrimages to places dedicated to him. Prayers were also made to St. John the Baptist, who, believe, who some believed caused the dancing. Others claimed to be possessed by demons or Satan, and therefore exorcisms were often performed on the dancers. Bartholomew notes that music was often played while participants danced, as it was believed to be an effective remedy. And during some outbreaks, musicians were even employed to play. Middlefort describes how the music encouraged others to join in, however, thus effectively made, making things worse, as did the dancing places that were sometimes set up. Contemporary explanations for the dancing plague included demonic possession and overheated blood. Investigators in the 20th century suggested that the afflicted might have consumed bread made from rye flour contaminated with the fungal disease ergot, which is known to produce convulsions. Bartholomew posited that the dancers were adherents of heretical sex dancing to attract divine favor. Hmm. So, demonic possession... Fevered blood, spider bite, scorpion sting, food poisoning. The most widely accepted theory was that of American medical historian John Waller, who laid out in several papers his reason for believing that the dancing plague was a form of mass psychogenic disorder or mass hysteria. Such outbreaks take place under circumstances of extreme stress and generally take form based on local fears. In the case of the Dancing Plague of 1518, Waller cited a series of famines, the presence of diseases such as smallpox and syphilis, as overwhelming stressors affecting the residents of Strasbourg. And he maintained that that stress combined with the fear of being cursed by St. Vitus, people would feel they were forced to dance. Let's look into this food poisoning a little more. Some believe that the dancing could have been brought on by food poisoning caused by the toxic and psychoactive chemical products of erga fungi, which grows commonly on grains, such as rye, used for baking bread. Ergotamine is the main psychoactive product of the ergot fungi, and is structurally related to the drug lysergic, ac lysergic acid diethylamide, or LSD-25 and is the substance from which LSD-25 was originally synthesized. So, that's where we get LSD from, guys. Basically, they're saying that these guys ate this bread that had been contaminated with this, and therefore they were just having a bad acid trip. John Waller in The Lancet argues that this theory does not seem tenable since it is unlikely that those poisoned by ergot could have danced for days at a time. Nor would so many people have reacted to its psychotropic chemicals in the same way. Yeah, because think about it. Like, 
if you take acid, you're not tripping for months or days at a time. It wears off. And not everybody has the same reaction. So, I, I can agree with him there. So, his theory is um, stress-induced mass hysteria. Um, this could have been a florid example of psychogenic movement disorder happening in mass hysteria or mass psychogenic illness, which involves many individuals suddenly exhibiting the same bizarre behavior. The behavior spreads rapidly and broadly in an epidemic pattern. This kind of comportment could have been caused by elevated levels of psychological stress caused by the ruthless years the people of Alsace were suffering. Waller speculates that the dancing was stress-induced on a mass level since the region where the people danced was riddled with starvation and disease and the inhabitants tended to be superstitious. Seven other cases of dancing plague were reported in the same region during the medieval area. The psychogenic illness could have created a chorea, a situation comprising random and intricate unintentional movements that flit from body part to body part. Diverse choreas were labeled in the Middle Ages referring to the independent epidemics of dancing mania that happened in Central Europe, particularly at the time of the plague. So despite all of the hypotheses that have been proposed, it remains unclear whether it was a real illness or a social phenomena. Um, there is a popular theory that the outbreaks were all staged and the appearance of strange behavior was due to its unfamiliarity. Religious cults may have been acting out well-organized dances in accordance with ancient Greek and Roman rituals. Despite being banned at the time, these rituals could be performed under the guise of uncontrollable mania. Justice Hecker, a 19th century medical writer, described it as a kind of festival where a practice known as the kindling of the nod fear was carried out. This involved jumping through smoke and fire in an attempt to ward off disease. Bartholomew notes how participants in this ritual would often continue to jump and leap long after the flames had gone. It is certain many participants of Dancing Mania were psychologically disturbed, but it's also likely some took a part out of fear or simply wished to copy everyone else because, you know mob mentality. Even back then, guys, it's a real thing. Sources agree dancing mania was one of the earliest recorded forms of mass hysteria and describe it as a psychic epidemic with numerous explanations that might account for the behavior of the dancers. I just... Y'all, I can't. So, cultural references. You ready for this? The Cornwall-based band Three Daft Monkeys described the dancing plague in their 2010 song, Days of the Dance. The plague is featured as one of the different disease outbreaks that can be encountered in the world of the game Crusader Kings 2. And in Stellaris, as an event on newly colonized planets, uh, Season 2, Episode 3 of the series Legion references the plague in a list of strange occurrences as examples of conversion disorders. Season 1, Episode 10 of the TV series Evil talks about the plague in an episode centered around an epidemic of singing or humming a particular song. 
The characters of Smurfs first appeared in the 1958 Johan and Peewit adventure, The Six Smurfed Flute, in which Peewit finds a recorder, the music of which compels people to dance until they faint from exhaustion. The recorder is then stolen by someone who uses it to commit several crimes, spreading the forced dancing across medieval Europe. It's believed that this is the uh, action which the Pied Piper story is based on, which I mentioned. Season 2, Episode 18 of Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated references the plague as a previous instance of uncontrollable dancing. The musical Don't Stop Me has a whole number alluding to the dancing plague, in which the characters are seemingly affected by it, and as such, two characters die. The Buffy the Vampire episode Once More with Feeling, the musical episode, y'all, I told you. Sunnydale is plagued by a demon that forces the inhabitants to sing their true feelings and then dance until they spontaneously combust. In Hocus Pocus, the witches, um, the Sanderson sisters, sing a spell song and put everyone um, under that spell to make them dance until they die. The Peter, Peter Gabriel song, Moribund the Burgermeister, references the phenomenon. And the main antagonist, Purge, in Space Channel 5 Part 2, creates a dancing mania plague throughout the galaxy using radio waves. Ah, who would have known? All right, guys. Um, what do you think? What makes the most sense? Is it mass hysteria? Is it food poisoning and everybody's just having a bad acid trip? Is it curse? Is it a, um, were they possessed? I don't know. To this day, scientists are not quite sure what caused the terrible e epidemic. Hmm. Is it just mom mentality? Was it... I, I tend to go with, you know, these people were still trying to find a way to practice their religious beliefs because, you know, Christianity was sweeping the world and paganism had been outlawed, but, you know, people are going to find a way to worship and all of that regardless of what's going on. So that's where I tend to follow. But make sure you guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Um, did you know, by the way, that there was an incident of incidents of this that happened in New York in 2011? 12 kids at a school up there just started dancing out of the blue and they thought maybe they had Tourette's but you know tests were run ruled out anything medically that could have caused it so they still don't know what's causing this even as early as two as recently as 2011 they don't know what's causing this, so. I don't know that I buy the religious aspect either. I mean, obviously they're not possessed or cursed, but 
there's a lot of other things it could be. There's still so much we're learning about this that I don't know. It, it's definitely got to be something phys physiological because I have danced with blisters. I have danced with my feet hurting. And y'all, if I didn't have the desire back then to dance, there was nothing that could have made me keep going. Because that stuff, that shit hurts. It is not fun. It's not enjoyable. So why on earth would you keep going unless there's something physically compelling you? Don't know what it is, but there's got to be something that's causing it. Because, damn, y'all. Let me know what you guys think it is. And in the meantime, let's look forward to our With It Wednesday. We'll get some progress going on the whips that I've got going. And we will talk... We'll, we'll do some stories of Alaska. Friday, I've got some unboxings for you. Um, I've got some fun stuff coming from Amazon and a huge order coming from Diamond Art Club. So um, look forward to that Friday frenzy. And we will see what's going to keep us going. If there's some, if there's a story you want to want me to do for our next Monday mystery let me know down in the comments thank you so much for stopping by it was great to see you remember to drink your water wear your mask stay safe we'll see you next time